Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started off cross-examining Miss Wendy Oldbag. And it's just as fun as you'd expect. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on uh, during her second testimony. Uh, right here, she says that Unguard must have been wearing the Nickel Samurai costume when he, uh, he was stabbing Juan. But that's not really possible, because if we look at the knife, uh, it has Unguard's fingerprints on it. Which would be weird if he was wearing the costume, because, you know, the costume has gloves. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor. Do you know why this piece of evidence is important to the case? You don't even have to ask, it's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I am driving at. What are we driving at, and whose car are we driving? If Mr. Rengard was really the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, it would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. What? And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There's no way he would do something like that. However, there's one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendants went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. And at that time, the defendant had no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm, but the murder still did take place. It's well known that the defendant and the victim had bad blood between them. Hmm, yes. I've heard of that. Well, Mr. Wright? What do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intentions of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with his theory? There is a contradiction. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. What are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ungard was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. Because the knife was brought from Ungard's room, so he would have had to, had to go into Juan's room, taken off the gloves, gotten murderous intent, completely ignored the knife and stuff that was in Juan's room, went back to his own room, grabbed the knife, walked back into Karita's room, and then stabbed him. This knife. It was used by Mr. Rengard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm... Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means that the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity, and mislead us. Order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To frame Madame Guard? It's to frame my client, Mr. Engard, of course. To frame... Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume, 
And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Ah! Witness! Looks like I've been made your life a ti looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Angie? Ah! Witness, did you or did you not see the Nickel Samurai? Well, at first I'm. Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but. Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Engard with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I, I can't really do anything about that. Look, I was waiting around in front of the doors because, well, well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. All right. Who were you waiting for, then? Hmm. That's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you are waiting for Mr. Juan Corita. Am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha. The way you think, you are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she's waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corita. Maybe... Phoenix. Maybe the bag was waiting around for that person. Hmm. If it's who I think me is hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss Old Bag. You were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Rengard's manager. But why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Hmm. Ah. This is... Well, this is... Hmm. Ah, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article. It can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA. Are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews. Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hmm. Looks like you found it. Found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away the whole sworn to confidentiality stuff. Witness! What in the world are you... Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. I've got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well, then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. That on God is one evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. And so to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret. You got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? The defendant sent his manager. What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. And this isn't... And isn't there a saying, the truth is never pleasant? Never heard that one before. Mr. Regworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We've looked into this matter, and found that the truth the article proposes is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm. But should this be true, and this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. The old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right. Unguard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth. Well, as the old saying goes, you gotta burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. I love whenever they just throw in a random, like, reference to pop culture because it is just so random and out of the blue and it hits you in the face and it's just hilarious. I mean, sometimes it's really outdated and you're just like, ugh. But 
Sometimes it's really, really funny. Unguard is one evil man. You can't say something like that without proof. That's just slander. But it's true! That woman was getting intimate with poor Juan. Look, it says so right here, doesn't it? Manager to the stars, Miss A.A. But the name of the magazine that came from this is Gossip Land. What? Are you saying that gossip is all just a pack of lies? <laughs> what do you know? I suppose next you'll swear to me that the news is 100% truth. Um... Honestly, Sonny, you can't discriminate between the news and gossip. Yes, discrimination is bad, Mr. Wright. Discriminate? Why did I do something like that? Anyway, Unguard would never get me to say touché. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. A scandal? Well, what do you mean by that? You're a dim-witted one, aren't you? I can't believe you don't know what a scandal is. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? Uh, no, no, I, I wasn't asking what the word scandal means. Even I know that much. Well, that unguard thought he could own a monopoly on popularity. But to do that, he sent his own manager to getting close with Juan. You don't have any proof that Mr. Unguard did any such thing. You must be suffering from shock. The shock of hearing the truth. And now, since you're in so much shock, you can't do anything right. You're right. I can't do anything. But boy, do I wish I could do something about you. Alright then, Sonny. Show me what you've got. Can you show me proof that Ungar didn't bear any ill will towards Juan? Okay, I don't think I present anything yet. I don't have anything to offer. See? Just as I thought. And you were lecturing me about saying things without proof. You're just giving me a free pass to say whatever I want, silly boy. Me and my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles, for you anyway. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Hold it. So what do you mean by, I took action? Like I already told you, I was lying in wait close to the crime scene. Once that slimy woman came out of Juan's room, I was going to capture her and teach her a good lesson. Something you youngins need. You're going to teach her a good lesson. I was going to make her eat the damaging beams of my ray gun. Like this! N no! Stop! Well, it was too bad that the woman didn't come through that door that night. Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me knows yet, okay? So, the solution for this cross-examination is to press this statement. Wait! What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know this secret information? Huh? Well, that's... because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. It's a secret. Even if you drill a hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did that old bag get such a secret piece of information? Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and present some evidence here. So no one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Old Bag? Why are you looking at me like that? Stop that! Witness! I'm sad to say it, but this is how you found out the secret, isn't it? We want to present? Lotta's camera, in, because in the case of it, was a tabloid article about the victim. The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outrageous uh, um, impressions about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, 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 I said impressions. Then, then, then everything written on this paper is completely meaningless. Uh, that's it, that's the note. Ah, ah, no, you see, this is something completely different. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy. Hmm, then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note. I'm a huge fan of wands, that's why. That infamous puffy-haired whippersnapper. She's working with that evil unguard. She said so herself. Unguard, I'm a, side I'm a sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. 
I was only checking what she had written. Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? <clears throat> I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. I'm the only. I'm the. It's only a little one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. Nice. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook it just this once. She looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? Let's pile on more pressure. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a de deafening blow to the prosecution. Witness, you said the only thing you stole was that note. Is this correct? Is stole? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? Miss Oldbag, I don't believe that note is the only thing you stole that night. She also stole a lot of his camera. Miss Oldbag, that note was with a camera. That note was with a camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera. Yesterday, a lot of heart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, "My sweetie, 1600 camera disappeared on me." Why? Why? Witness! What is it, Gramps? If you leave the note, then it's only logical that you have the camera, too. Yeah, looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Ugh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know. I still eat meals like you, I fall in love, and borrow things from people. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little bit off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's when I noticed it said, Slimebag Celebrity Photographer Extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of pictures she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. Bailiff, check this camera's photos. Hurry. We must examine them at once. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? There's only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. P please present it to the court. This is... this is the Nickel Samurai. See, I told you, that's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. Well, what does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. Ungard clearly stated that at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. If that is the case, then this Nickel Samurai is... the defendant. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright? The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? This photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I would put my life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. The photo that Lotta took. There's something strange with it. There's... there's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming right. Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree there's nothing strange with this photo. There's no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. What? Debunk with a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um... Anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Um, well, I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this chance go by. Where in the heck did she take this picture anyway? It's all out of focus. 
Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now then, let's hear your objection. What about this photo is strange? I want to look at the feet area here. Now I'd like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. What are you pointing to? His ankles? If you could see this person's ankle, that would be one thing. However, you can't. And? What does that mean? The Nickel Samurai in this photo could not have been Mr. Ungard. What is the meaning of this? I wonder if you would care to elaborate. With actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai's poster. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His... his socks? You can see his socks! Exactly. However, in this photo... The Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakama up just to walk. There's only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Alright, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Hentworth is unusually calm today. That's true. He's just letting the trial run itself, as if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only think that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then he's not taking any damage? Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not mad on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Hmm, I thought it would come to this. What? Right, I have something I want to ask you. I think you've proven that the person inside this costume is not met on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Who's this person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. What you, what you should be focused on is Edward's attitude, don't you think? Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person in this photograph? The only person it could possibly be. I mean, it obviously can't be any of the people here. And we're not going to say it's Madame Guard, because he's our client. Uh, it can't be Old Bag, because, you know, she witnessed this event, and it can't be Celeste, because she's dead. The only person that leaves is, once again, Adrian Andrews. Adrian Andrews? If you want to know who that Nickel Samurai is, it is none other than this woman. And why would you say it would be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Mr. Ungard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Ungard that night. And how does that all that add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to gain a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Ungard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as the murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense motions to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Corita. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Order! 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 It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. Alright, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Ah! If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya... Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court. Now then. 
please, Your Honor. Continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrews' testimony if she's not... I abhor wasting such valuable time. Edgeworth! Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But, but We cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Tisk tisk. Unexpected development. I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subpoenaing Miss Adrian Andrews is all happening according to plan, even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? 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 What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution lobby. She is the next witness. Everything... Everything was planned out in advance by that man? Somehow I knew there was no way Edgeworth would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a ten-minute recess. Please prepare your witness for that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a ten-minute recess. <laughs>